I've been messing around with this masking fluid that is designed, I believe, for primarily watercolor, but it could be also other applications as well. However, I have found that it works really nicely with alcohol ink. And I use uh, pre-gessoed boards. All right, let me show you the boards. Pardon me as I go through my studio, y'all. So, I'll try to put the link down in the description below for these guys, but uh, they're pre, pre gessoed boards, so they're super, super smooth, and they work great with alcohol links. Also, we're good with um, resin as well. All right, here we go back. I got my space cleaned up a lot better. It's nicer. It's still got a lot of stuff around, but <laughs> I can actually work and move around. So I've been just kind of goofing off and using this uh, uh, masking fluid. But what I have done is, I okay, this is the only downside I have about this particular company is this little needle here. It gets clogged up something fierce. And you constantly have to clean, okay, I'm screw there, hang on. Okay, you constantly have to clean it out. I mean, constantly. The lid even has a needle that goes inside this little nozzle there. But the problem is, is that sometimes you can get out a lot of blobs that come out and you end up losing control. So you guys have seen me use these guys with alcohol ink. And what I've done is, literally transferred the fluid, uh, the masking fluid into those guys. And it works great. I don't have any more headaches anymore. And depends on how, you know, they're very, very flexible, the, the bottles are, so they're easy to, to squeeze and apply pressure, like if you want a little bit or a lot, you know, a thin line or a thick line coming out. And so I've been just kind of goofing off with some panels here. And I'm going to mess around with some alcohol ink in a little bit. You can kind of see a pattern there, some kind of wings going on. But uh, see, you get thick lines and skinny lines. I wasn't too worried about my lineage right at the moment. I was just playing with the design element. And so that's what it looks like when it's fresh. And when it starts to dry, it starts to turn a little darker. And eventually, I believe this one is primarily dry. Right now, you can see in these little thick zones, that's the area you're looking for. And you should be able to touch them without transferring it to your fingers. Um, however, I don't touch those guys right now because you can see it's a little bit lighter right there in the thick spots. And if I do that, it'll pick up some of the light fluid and it'll end up picking up a whole string of this stuff. It's kind of like playing with rubber cement. So once you get a string going, you know, the whole line will come up. And that's also the flip side that makes it really cool. Now I'm going to put this little bit of video in on the next three, uh, well, the, the two following this one, in case you're interested. And I'll put it at the end of the video. So that way, if you're interested in the uh, masking fluid, you have the same info. So otherwise, you can go past that part. So I need to wait for these to dry so I can play. All right, I got this little guy to work on with some alcohol links. We're gonna do some neons and some neutrals. Did I really say that with the squeak? Neutrals, yeah, kinda did. Oh well, <laughs> let's get started. These two guys waiting and I wanna have another one and I was trying to think of colors I was uh, going back and forth. Okay, I've got my cool tones here. And now, granted, there's some uh, neon undertones in there. Um, there's also the warm tones. And so I was trying to think of something to go with it. And I thought playing with the, the neutrals, with the browns and the greens might go, go well with it. Hopefully, it's it'll be kind of a combination of both of those. 
but we'll see. Howdy, howdy, this is Claire Lawrence. Okay, so we're having a play day today and I'm bringing you guys along with me. And hopefully I don't make as much of a mess as I did on the one before this, because I made a mess. But that's not unusual for me. So I'm doing a fairly easy technique that works out really well. Of course, I have my one little pink spot now because of my pink fingers. I have got some messy fingers. <laughs> Highly recommend using gloves. However, I don't do it all the time and I pay the price. But that's all right. Okay. So, we did some neon colors with the pieces before that. So, I want to definitely um, tie that together. And this time, I'm going to put the neon ma mainly in the middle. I have a little bit on the outside, but not a whole lot. But I'm gonna play with some darker, some neutrals. I've got a couple different tones of brown and I've got a pebble in here, which is kind of like a light grayish color. This is my darker one. I'd say that's my medium tone one, but it doesn't look so medium when you place it down here. So alcohol links can vary quite a bit. Wait a minute. Am I screwing up here? I think I am. Can vary a little bit in intensities when they're wet. Uh, so it may look like it's really, really dark, and then when it dries up, it's not so bad. Um, I also have a green. Oh, this lid is tight. My oh, poor little lid, it's like wonky. Can you see it? <laughs> Now what I do here is I kind of give it a little bit of movement back and forth and that way I get some nice blends going on and then I'm going to blow this out and I'm going to have a paper towel handy before I blow it out because I already need it. I get carried away I am gonna bring in some more of the green and maybe a richer that was a neon green so I'm gonna see if I can bring in a richer darker green Let's see if I bump that up a little bit this is why I don't list my colors in the beginning because mom was keeping my mind Hang on a second. Okay, the old conversation of, what's for dinner, mama? <laughs> At least I raise these boys right that they know if I'm in a pickle or in a project, a lot of times they'll be like, hey, what about this for dinner? And they'll start it out for me, which is cool. the green which I'm kind of okay with kind of not um let's see if I can work out my browns a little bit more right in this zone
it's kind of running the inks around and it catches on the channel of these uh, uh, masking fluid lines and it'll run along that edge, which is kind of fun. It'll leave a dark edge there. So when I'm peeling up the uh, masking fluid, it really, it really stands out. So it's kind of fun. All right, now I need another paper towel. Cause I'm busy making a mess. All right. Which is nothing out of the ordinary for me. All right. Well, it helps to put alcohol into the cup. Now what I'm gonna do is dip my brush into alcohol and manipulate the colors around. But first I'm gonna get the pink off my brush. I don't mind pink going into the piece. I just don't want it to be a dominating part, if you know what I mean. Okay. So, I kind of like what's going on here, but I want to work it out a little bit more. Just kind of removing the ink a little bit. And working with the masking fluid lines. Letting the alcohol do its job. She's having fun. So one thing I learned from uh, quilting is when you're doing a design, you learn how to do the swipes or the um, swishes from all different directions. So like if you do a little curly cue like this, you learn to do it like this and learn to come in from the bottom like this. And <laughs> yeah, so you hit it from all different angles, the same kind of shape. And so now I'm not really turning this around because I know it's in frame with the camera here. So I'm just kind of still working with, and as the shape is changing, I'm just still working with that. And all that is, is just practice doing the shape over and over again. So you can learn how to do it too very easily. You just gotta keep messing around with it. That's good. I like that. All right. So we got a little bit of this area here. I want to highlight a little bit too. Sometimes when you work with colors, you can bring them around from the another area and bring some of those darker colors up. 
like so. So I got a real strong line in here within this swoop that I'm not that crazy about. So I'm just going to manipulate this around a bit until I get a shape that I like or a blend I like. So sometimes that's all it is about alcohol. You just keep messing with it until it's like, yeah, like just like that, stay, you know? I wonder if watercolors are the same way. I think that's working out pretty good. All right. And we're going to work with our swirls here, which I think I just overworked. See if I can work that a little bit less. There we go. them stand out but not a lot Looks a little better. So all I'm doing is just kind of brushing it on one side, giving it a light area, almost like a highlight. Oh, let me do the other side. And all I'm doing is basically moving the ink around from one side to the other. As my thinking sounds.
that yellow turned into more like an okra color, which is fine because that works well with the neutrals. And I figured it might do something like that. I just wanted to have some intensity in there just in case. I am good. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, like that. Okay. That works. I'll bring you in. All right, I'm gonna put this guy to the side so it can dry with its buddies. And then uh, give it a UV spray. And then I can peel all this goodness off of it. Okay, to be honest, that's kind of fun. All right, until then, there you go. All right, for some reason my Wi-Fi kicked out and I got a warning uh, message so it didn't get me doing the little dots, but I did. They're like a dark violet dot, so it'll probably look a little bit like um, a, maybe a brown or something like that when it's all said and done, but that's okay. It's, see, it's got the dots of those better, I think. Okay. Later. All right, so I want to give you an idea of what happens if you're a little impatient about peeling this stuff up. It can transfer to your fingers and then transfer to the white, so I'll, I'll have to figure out what to do about that, but... Anyway, got to peel this stuff up. Try and do this on camera here and hold it. These guys here are little applicators meant for makeup. And if you notice, let's see, zoom in. There's a little bitty, teeny, tiny little cotton swab on the end of it. So that makes it so that I can get into these really tiny areas. Let's see, I'm gonna put this alcohol here. So we can zoom in. I'm actually looking at what I'm doing through the camera instead of, and I can go back and remove that. But gotta be mindful of something. It will bleed out and such. So you get, see how it's kind of ballooning a little bit there? You just gotta be quick on the drying. And that's how you clean that up. All right, so that's how this guy turned out after I turned, taken off all the uh, masking fluid. It's kind of fun.
right, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, but definitely hit the bell to get notified. Next time I put a video up, check the links in the description below for any supplies I use, as well as my Etsy store. Go buy some stuff. Later.